Hi, I'm Mary Ann from a small town in Austria. A few years ago, I accidentally discovered that I'm adopted. And my dad doesn't know I know. Since then, all I've wanted is to find my real parents. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I never knew my mom. But I grew up with the most amazing dad. He worked as a carpenter, and even though we never had much money, I had everything I needed. And what I needed most were books. Dad would read to me every night, and I became obsessed. When I joined school and discovered the library, I felt like I'd gone to heaven. And I always preferred my friends from stories over real people. Once in sixth grade, I needed to use the dictionary. So I went to dad's room and climbed a stool to take it down from the shelf. Just then, the stool under me wobbled and I went crashing to the floor with some books. As I started picking everything up, I saw something that left me shook. It was a picture of a couple holding a baby. And the woman? looked exactly like me. She had to be my mom. And the man next to her was my real dad? I turned the picture over and all it said was Vienna 2005. That was my birth year. Were my real parents in Vienna? I snuck the picture into my pocket. Dad had kept it a secret and I had to know why. I was waiting to confront dad that evening, but he didn't come home. Hours passed and he wouldn't even pick up his phone. Just Then there was a loud knock on the door, and it was Dad's friends from work, bringing him on a wheelchair. Oh my God! Dad, what happened? He'd had a terrible fall at work and wasn't allowed to walk for months. And even after he fully recovered, he had a permanent limp now. I put aside all thoughts of confronting him about my real parents. I didn't want to make things harder for him. Once in the eighth grade, I'd gone with Dad to the market when suddenly he got a cramp in his leg and lost his balance. He went crashing straight into a wealthy looking man who in turn fell onto a food seller's stall, bringing down the whole thing with him. As I helped dad up, the wealthy man turned to him furiously. You blind, ignorant man. Look what you've done. My suit is ruined. Do you know what it costs? More than your house, I'm sure. Don't talk to my father like that. He didn't do it intentionally. He has an injured leg. So why is this cripple going around causing trouble for everyone else? I want the money for my suit. You may have all the wealth in the world, sir, but you certainly don't have any compassion. My father's ailments is something. You may have all the wealth in the world, sir, but you certainly don't have any compassion. My father's ailments is something he can't help. But what's your excuse for your cold, unfeeling, dead heart? Hey, kid, just shut up and... But just then, a rich-looking lady stepped forward. Don't talk like that to the child. Will this solve your problem? She waved a thick bundle of cash in his face. In two seconds, the man's anger was gone. The rich lady even gave money to the stall owner, and she offered to take me and dad home. We invited her in and soon after, she said something completely unexpected. I'm so impressed with you, Marianne. And this might sound strange, but would you like to come live with me in Vienna? I would love to send you to a really good school. Vienna? That's where my real parents were from. This was my chance to look for them. She even said she'd hire dad as a handyman on her estate. I was really eager to go. And within a week, we'd packed up our lives and moved. The lady's estate was five times larger than my school, and Dad and I were given a small cottage to live in. And just a few days later, the lady told me I'd be joining her daughter's school. On my first day as I walked up to the lady's car, a girl suddenly pushed me aside. 
Ooh, maid, where do you think you're going? Go clean something. Where are your manners, Lisa? This is the amazing girl I told you about, and I'd like you two to be friends. Oh, she's your charity case? She looks like her only friends would be cows and baby goats. And what is so distasteful about being friends with such lovely creatures, may I ask? Uh, no, you may not ask me anything. Who talks like that, freak? She got in and slammed the door shut. I just stayed silent during the ride, but then suddenly, Lisa made the driver stop. I'm not gonna be seen with you. You can walk the last few blocks. She pushed me out and drove off. What a witch! Just as I was crossing the road, a sports car came speeding and stopped inches away from me. A cute boy stepped out from the back seat and shouted, Hey, watch where you're going, loser. Wow, who were these people? Turns out, the jerk was in my class along with Lisa. I could see them all looking me up and down, but I just ignored them. Later at recess, I sat alone reading. The boy took a seat at my table with his friends behind him. I don't think I introduced myself before. I'm Vincent. What's your name? You can call me whatever you like. After all, what's in a name? Huh? What are you saying? Would a rose smell less sweet if it was named garbage? Would a fire not burn us if it was called a flower? Would I be less annoyed by you if my name wasn't Marianne? The answer is no. Why are you talking like that, weirdo? So, your name's Marianne? That's kind of pretty. You don't need to remember it. I don't think we'll have much to do with each other. And with that, I just left. Aw, poor Vincent. How does it feel to be rejected by a girl? Oh, please. I just need a little time with her, and she'll be head over heels in love. I can work my magic on any girl. Well, I'm not so sure about this one. Challenge accepted. It was no surprise that Vincent and Lisa were best friends and their gang was the meanest bunch of kids around. I'd see them picking on smaller kids at recess or poking fun at their classmates. They didn't even spare the teachers. So I was horrified when the physics teacher announced that I'd be paired with Vincent for a project. But he looked delighted. I tried ignoring him and was reading the science book to figure out something when suddenly he snatched it from me. Why are you always... staring at a book when you could be looking at more beautiful things, like me? I don't have time for your nonsense, Vincent. Give that back. Okay, but only if you agree to go out with me. I'd rather jump off a cliff. Wrong answer. And with that, he ripped some pages out and threw the book in the trash bin. What is the matter with you? Don't you have any respect for anyone or anything? God, you're such an imbecile. Why do you use such strange words? An imbe... Im, imbe... what? What now? An imbecile. It means a fool, an idiot, a dummy, a moron. I pushed him away and he went crashing into our half-finished project, but I didn't even care. There was no way I was working with him. A few days later, I was walking back home when suddenly it started to pour heavily. As I dashed through the rain, a car stopped me and Vincent rolled down the window. Hey, you're gonna get sick. Get in the car. I'd rather catch pneumonia. Oh my god. Just get in. Hate me later. Reluctantly, I got in and a minute later we were driving up to his gigantic mansion. He quickly led me to the fireplace in the library, and my mouth was just <sighs> wide open. I, I've never seen so many books in one place in my whole life. What a treasure this is. Well, you're welcome to... <laughs> Take some. I don't read them, and my parents are hardly ever here. I felt a bit sorry for him. That sounded lonely. And suddenly, I remembered something. <gasps> oh my god, my parents' picture! I dug through my pockets to find it all wet, and I started flapping it around to dry it. What's that, and why are you acting crazy? It's… well, it's the only picture I have of my real parents. I told him how I'd discovered it, and that I carried it around with me, hoping I'd find them somewhere. 
I think I could help you with that. My parents know a good private investigator. He could probably track them down. Do you really mean that? That would be amazing. Thank you so much. As we spent some time talking, I felt myself warming up to Vincent. When he walked me out to go home with his driver, I suddenly turned to him. Vincent, why do you act that way in school? What do you mean? I mean, you have everything in the world and you're wasting every opportunity to learn. And all you do is tease and mock other people. I'm sure your life isn't perfect, but that's not an excuse to be the worst version of yourself most of the time. I thought he'd be really mad, but instead, he took my hand. I'm sorry you've only seen the worst of me. I'll try to change that. He kissed me on the cheek before he turned away, and for some reason, I couldn't stop smiling all the way home. As I was walking down to the cottage, Lisa suddenly jumped out from behind a tree. Is that Vincent's car you just got off from? Why? It's none of your business, Lisa. Vincent is very much my business. I know you have a wild imagination, but don't start dreaming that someone like him could ever like you. I pushed her aside and walked off. She was crazy, as if I wanted someone like Vincent. Or did I? He was just so nice after that day. He'd come sit next to me in the cafeteria, help me carry my stuff, and one time as I was walking back home, he leapt out of a car and decided to walk with me. He told me the investigator was hopeful we'd find my parents really soon. And a few days later, when he asked me to be his date for the Christmas dance at school, I really couldn't refuse. Dad had surprised me one evening with the most beautiful dress, and at the dance, I felt like someone straight out of a fairy tale I was searching for Vincent in the hall when I felt a gentle tap on my shoulder. Wow, you look really beautiful, Marianne. He took my hand and led me to the dance floor, and it felt like we were in our own little world. At the end of the song, he suddenly pulled me closer and leaned in to kiss me. Everyone around us was clapping and cheering as I kissed him back. During the evening, I went to freshen up in the bathroom, and when I returned, I found Vincent in a corner with Lisa and his friends. Wow, Vincent, you really take a challenge seriously. You said you could make any girl fall for you and you proved it. That kiss could have fooled even me. Marian has totally fallen for your Prince Charming act. It's gonna be so much fun when you dump her. That's what I was? A challenge? Vincent looked shocked as they all turned around to see me behind them. No, Marianne, wait, it's not what you- I suddenly slapped him hard. Why did I think you were actually a decent human being? You even pretended to help me find my parents just to convince me that you cared? You're the most vile person I've had the misfortune to meet. I hate you. No, I despise you. I didn't go to school for days. I just didn't want to see anyone's face. But one day, Dad walked into my room holding a package. A boy from your school dropped this, saying it was important. Forgive me for opening it first, but Marianne, you've known about your parents and you've been looking for them? Wait, what? Dad, I'm sorry, I just needed to know. He gave me the package as he sat down on my bed, and I looked through the papers with trembling hands. The first was a newspaper clipping, saying my parents were politicians who had been sentenced to prison for 25 years for stealing state funds. I worked at your parents' house. When they were arrested, you were going to be sent to an orphanage. And I just really wanted a kid, so I adopted you, Marianne. I kept the truth from you because I thought it would only make you upset. I'm sorry if I ha haven't been the best dad. I jumped forward and hugged him, tears pouring down my face. No, you're the most amazing dad anyone could possibly have. I just wanted to know who they were. But it's not because I've ever been unhappy with you as my father. Not ever. 
Dad hugged me back. If you ever want to see them, I'll arrange a visit, okay? It won't bother me at all. I know you're my daughter. By the way, that boy just left if you want to talk to him. I ran out the door after Vincent, who was walking down to the gate. Why did you do that? Your stupid challenge was over, right? Why did you make an effort to find my parents? Marianne, it did start off as a stupid challenge, and I wasn't planning on falling for you, but I did, almost instantly. What I feel for you is real and true. I wouldn't have made all that effort if I didn't love you. You're the most special girl I've ever met, and you make me want to be a better person. I'm so sorry for hurting you. Please forgive me, will you? I looked into his earnest eyes and slowly smiled. I'd rather go down with the Titanic, but I stepped closer and pulled him in for a kiss.